All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today, we are really going to start getting into the Industrial Revolution. Uh, particularly, we're going to be looking at the laissez-faire attitude and company towns, you know, okay? And we'll be talking a little bit about tariffs at the end. Okay, now this is the thing, though. Um, I've had a lot of students in my past tell me, what do I need to know this for? What's the purpose? You know, that was then. You know, this is now. But the thing is, as you're going to see in just this lesson alone, three times there are things that, that happened in the 1880s that still happen today, relatively new. Okay, so just uh, pay attention to that, all right? So the objective today, we're going to analyze what life was like in the company town. We're going to examine the, the effects of tariffs. And we're going to create an argument on whether laissez-faire attitude is a good thing or a bad thing. Okay. Now, here's your warm-up picture. Now, sad, I hate to say this, sad to say, but um, it really would have helped you out if you were in class. Because I could, you could physically see the, jeez, uh, you could physically see how much space um, I was talking about to this question. Because it says, do you think you could live with your family like this? And I showed the class how big it was. So if you can, uh, if you have like a tape measure or something like that, uh, measure 12 feet by 8 feet. And just imagine if you and your family, however many people there are in your family, um, could live in a room like that big. So 12 by 8. You know, that way you can have a little visual and see like, Ooh, dang, that's pretty small, you know. And basically tell me, could you live with your family, however many people there are, in a tiny place like that, or couldn't you? And now a student did ask in class, where's the restroom? And the thing is, there were no restrooms in, the, in that room. The restrooms were, you had to go outside the door, <clears throat> and because these are apartments, you know, you had to go in the hallway. And in that hallway there's the restroom which everyone on that floor shared so yeah not that great okay so think about it uh pause the video write your response because we're moving on in three two one all right so america at this time is starting to get really into allowing entrepreneurs to really come out to america and seek a profit you know because they the way they thought it was if business makes money, then America makes money, right? And there were two major things that made a lot of money. One was manufacturing. So if you made something, whether it was like wheelchairs, you know, tables, whatever, something that could be used by people, um, you're making good money. If you were transporting the goods, like if you had a railroad, you know, uh, if you had boats, if you owned the docks, you know, along the coastline area, you made pretty good money. Okay. Now, here's the thing, though. And this is where I was talking about how it's like nowadays. Um, there were citizens back then who said, you know what? Our government is like on us too much and things like that. They're, regula they're doing too much regulation and stuff. It should be more of a laissez-faire. Now, laissez-faire is French for literally from uh, French to English, meaning allowed to do, meaning that they felt that the government should let people do what they want. Let them choose what they want. Let them, you know, if they want to do something, let them. You know, the government shouldn't be on people's backs and telling them, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. No, you shouldn't do this. And again, there are people today right now who are saying, yeah, maybe some of you guys right now are like, yeah. The government shouldn't be on our backs. They shouldn't be doing this. They shouldn't be doing that. And you're going to see why that's a bad thing. That the government isn't um, you know, having regulations and things like that. Okay. So the government at that time basically said, okay, we'll do that. You know, so taxes were not really collected. Um, they eased up on the tax, which I mean, a lot of people would like, right? Especially nowadays. Oh, heck yeah. Not to pay taxes on this stuff. Heck yeah. And the spending. 
the amount of money the government spent was really low. So, um, yeah. Now, like I said, there are people who are like, that's good. What's wrong with that? The government not taxing people and the government spending less money. So what's wrong with that? Well, here's the thing. Things that we need are paid by taxes. You know, you got school, you got policemen, firemen, you got fixing the roads, you have the cleaning our water and stuff like that. There's a lot of things that go into that we use every day that the government does because our taxes go to that. Okay. And that's the thing if taxes aren't taken and government doesn't spend money on that kind of stuff, all that stuff goes away. You know, that or you're going to have to hire somebody to do it for you. And that you might as well be paying taxes, you know, because it's going to cost a heck of a lot more to pay someone privately to come to do, you know, be your security or, you know, clean your water and things like that. You know, so that's the thing. Okay. And these people are going to find out the hard way. The other thing was regulation on industry. Okay, so the government wasn't on these businesses back, making sure that they don't dump like dirty, nasty water into drinking water, you know, the rivers and some of that, you know, um, they no longer did that now. Uh, they also didn't regulate wages. So now let's say you like, oh, I want to get, you know, I'm going to get this minimum wage job, you know, in April when it's $20 at this point, those companies could pay you less than nothing. And every place around is going to do it, you know, because, hey, you need the job more than they do. You need money. You know, and especially at this time in the 1880s, there was a lot of immigrants coming into the country. So they're like, so if you won't take this job working for like 50 cents a day, don't worry. There's an immigrant coming in. He'll work for 50 cents a day. So you starve. You get no money. And don't try to get a job anywhere else because I'm paying the highest. You know, so that's the thing. Okay, that's the thing that you guys have to get into your mentality of there was no minimum wage. There's no health care system. None of that stuff that you we take for granted nowadays. It wasn't that back then. You know, so. And it's again, all because the government was involved. And even now, if the government didn't, if the government took this mentality like that back then. Things would be really, really bad here. So these companies had a great idea in the 1880s uh, for them, by the way. They would buy some land, right? Build a new factory, create some homes near it, some stores and some of that. Um, this became known as a company town. They created and owned the entire company corporation. They would own everything. The factory, the homes, the, the the stores, and some of that. Okay. And they usually made sure that the homes, apartments were near the factory. So you couldn't be like, oh, well, you know, my buggy, you know, the, the wheel busted. So I was late to work that way. They'd be like, no, no, no. You could have walked. It's right there. You know, that's not a good, good enough reason. Um, the company towns, also owned again like i said almost everything if they didn't own it all then they owned a large majority of it and like i was telling the class sometimes what they would do is they would say okay let's say i'm the owner and i have a cousin who needs a job you know i might say okay i'll tell you what i'll put you in charge of the grocery store you know you, that's yours now so you make sure that people are paying that the items you need are there stuff like that la 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 you know, again, they own everything, the homes, the stores, the markets, library, churches, entertainment, bars, things like that. They owned it all. And here's the thing, too. They wouldn't pay their workers regular U.S. dollars. No, no, no. They would pay them these dollar bills you see down here at the bottom. You know, so like I was saying in class, if you made a bet, say 500 bucks on a bet, a football get bet, right? You won. If the person who you know, owes you money gave you one hundred dollar bill, right, U.S. regular hundred dollar bill, and four hundred dollars of that money right there, would you take it? 
Now, some students are like, oh, yeah, it could be worth something. And a bunch of other kids were like, no, it's not worth anything. And that's the thing, exactly true. It's not worth anything. That money is only good in that company town. If you think that's good, you might as well get Monopoly money and go to the Target and try to spend with that money. They'll look at you like you like something's wrong with you. You know, that's the same thing as basically Monopoly money. And so that's what they would pay the people. And if people are like, well, I want my real money. I want real money. No, nope, this is what we're giving you. This is all those other stores at the grocery store. And all that, that's all they'll take. You take this money or hey, we send you out your way. Now, a student try to say, oh, I would sue them. Who you, how are you going to sue them? You can't afford a lawyer. No lawyer is going to take whatever money you got. No. And these guys, these companies, you think they're just going to sit back and do nothing? No, they're going to they're gonna bring their lawyers. They, have, they can afford the best lawyers. You know, so, no. Okay. You, you have this idea of like this imaginary world type of thing where, oh, it's, it's how it works because, you know, it's not because I said so. No. Okay. And that's the problem here. These people were basically paid no real money, forced to live in those apartments. Again, they wouldn't hire you unless you agreed to live in those apartments, live in those houses. And you could only spend that money in the company town. You try to go to any other place and spend that money, you couldn't because it was basically worthless. The sad thing is there were cheaper apartments and like grocery stores selling cheaper food. Just, I mean, right outside the company town, the next town over, things were cheaper. But again, these guys were paid with that fake money. So, yeah, things were bad. Now, the U.S. goods, uh, the U.S. government actually enforced tariffs on imported goods. So if you forget, imported mean things being brought into our country. Because the thing is... Other countries were selling, let's say, uh, a table made in the United States cost $200. And a table from, let's say, France cost $100. People were going to buy that $100, especially if they're exactly the same. You know, there's no real difference between them. They're both strong and sturdy and stuff like that. But it's just that this one's cheaper. So the government wanted to make sure that people bought American stuff. So these tariffs were imposed and tariff is basically an extra tax. So instead of it being costing a hundred dollars, they would put a tariff of like $150. So now that table doesn't cost a hundred dollars. It would cost $250. So now what are you going to buy? The one American one at $200 or the French one now at $250. And like a lot of students said in class, I'd buy the American one. And see, that's the thing. This is where we get hurt, the people. Because the American price never changed, right? It stayed at 200 We're basically forced to pay more for whatever we need. You know? Um, and the thing is, uh, these taxes, these tariffs, if we put a tariff on another country, let's say England or J China or Japan or whatever, what do you think they're going to do to us? Basically, like I said, glass. If someone slaps you, punches you, what are you going to do? They're like, punch them back? Exactly. Same thing with tariffs. We put that on a country, they're going to do it to us. And again, that hurts American businesses, especially businesses doing have, that have business overseas. You know, uh, farmers really get hit hard because we they sell, especially like here in California, we sell our goods all around the world. Now, a fresh thing of fruit and vegetables they don't last that long right two three weeks max that's it even if they're refrigerated right so if no one's buying it what's going to happen to that food it's going to go to waste and who's losing money the farmers you know so tariffs do hurt americans and this is exactly what i was saying again this stuff a tariff was put in place not that long ago like five years ago by president trump he put a tariff on china China put a tariff on us. So our farmers who were sending things over there, those people weren't buying anything because the price is way too high. 
and we try to buy stuff, you know, like uh, PS5s and stuff like that from China, the price was way high. The the computer chips and car parts and things like that made in China were now really expensive. You know, and all because the president said, we need Americans to buy American stuff and la la la. And it just hurt us more. Okay, so that's what I mean, guys. Stuff like this happened in the 1880s and it still happens today because people don't know their history. Okay. Now, once this happened, a lot of businesses were like, hey, you know what? We should have a free trade. And free trade is international trade that basically they're like, okay, let's just let businesses buy what they want, how much they want, from where they want, from whoever they want. You know, there shouldn't be any stipulations, regulations, or anything like that on where you buy products from and who you buy from. All right, so here is your warm-up question, or your uh, end of the lesson question. So we talked about company towns, how those people were basically, like, like a student said, they were stuck. Yeah, they were stuck there, you know. Uh, so would you consider people who lived and worked in a company town as a form of slavery would you consider it like that or would you say no that's kind of a stretch so again company town people they got paid yeah but it was fake money they were forced to live in an area that their uh the people they worked for told them to live they were given entertainment food and stuff like that at prices that the owners established you know um so, and then they again they couldn't just get up and leave because you, you how were you gonna go? You got no money, you got nothing. You know, what are you gonna do? So that's my question to you. Would you consider slavery uh, as a form of slavery or not? Okay. So what do you think? So once you've answered this question, um Make sure your name's on the front, okay? Uh, so with that being said, guys, hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson, all right? So with that being said, you guys, take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys later, okay?